This video is sponsored by Audible. Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, including Audible Originals. The standard for excellence at the tight end position has been defined and redefined in the last two decades. We started with Antonio Gates and Tony Gonzalez, then came unstoppable receiving threats like Jimmy Graham and Travis Kelsey. In 2010, Rob Gronkowski was drafted and lifted that standard to an unreachable height. Gronk was a more versatile threat than the others, using his dynamic abilities as a receiver and physicality as a blocker in the ground game, making him the complete tight end. That was until George Kittle came along. Kittle, a smaller, faster version of Gronk, possesses a unique combination of technique, power, and that very versatility that made Gronk such a deadly weapon. Kittle can put his hand in the dirt and move defensive linemen, run impeccable routes as a receiver, block as a fullback in the power run game, take handoffs like a running back and race 30 yards upfield, or stay in protection erasing elite pass rushers like TJ Watt or Miles Garrett. In 2018, Kittle proved his legitimacy as a receiver and cemented his place in history, setting the single-season receiving yards record for a tight end with 1,377 yards. Now, in 2019, with key injuries to the offensive line, he's been asked to stay in and block more frequently while leading all receivers, not just tight ends, in yards per route run with 3.05. While his ability as a receiver is record-breaking, his tenacity as a blocker is even more impressive. This year, the 49ers have gained 4.9 yards per carry when Kittle is on the field. Without him, in only almost 50% decrease to 2.6. Every week, Kittle's blocks go viral on social media, so let's gain a better understanding of the 49ers' offensive system and how Kittle excels within the framework of their offense. The foundation of their scheme is their outside zone run. The objective of this concept is to force the defense to move laterally, which creates cutback lanes for the ball carrier. Each blocker will take what's called a bucket step, where they initially lose ground to gain ground. The defense tries to attack upfield to penetrate the gaps and blow up the run. The lineman can't allow the defender's head to cross his face. He has to keep his helmet play side to maintain leverage on the defender to seal them inside. If a lineman blocks a defender head on and does not leverage him one way or the other, this will muddy the read of the running back. The outside zone creates double teams or combo blocks. When a lineman is uncovered, meaning there is nobody directly in front of him, he will combo block the closest defender to the backside, then climb to a linebacker or safety. The running back's target point is the offensive tackle's outside hip. If he sees a cutback lane, he will make one cut and he's gone. However, if he sees a walled off edge on the outside of the play, he will continue up the sideline. That's where Kittle comes into the picture. Defensive tackle and Dominican Sue is out on the edge outside of Kittle. Sue wants to rip through the C-gap to explode into the backfield and ruin everything. Kittle and the tackle Joe Staley will execute a combo block. Kittle will strike Sue's outside number with his shoulder pad to try and move Sue inside for Staley to block. Without Kittle's help, this is an extremely difficult block for Staley to execute. When he strikes, Kittle must remain balanced with a quick, violent punch while keeping his eyes downfield towards the second level. If he releases from the combo block too early, Sue will cross Staley's face and take down the running back. If he holds the block with Sue for too long, the outside will be wide open for a second-level defender to penetrate into the backfield. He shoves Sue inside so Staley can seal him out of the play, then works to maintain outside leverage on the linebacker to usher the running back around the edge. When Kittle shoves the backer inside, he moves on to the safety and gains leverage on him as well. The zone running scheme is difficult to teach and requires a fast, agile, and intelligent offensive line to execute the system. The outside zone is the very core of the 49ers offense, and conceptually, everything else works off of it. They flip the play to a standard I formation with Kittle now on the right to execute the same combo block. Defensive end Miles Garrett is shaded inside and fires off the ball to strike Kittle first. Kittle's power comes from his legs, glutes, and trunk as he sinks down below Garrett and uses his pad leverage to power him inside to the tackle where he is sealed backside and banished to Shanahan's dungeon. Though Garrett is 22 pounds heavier, Kittle moves him inside and immediately climbs to the second level. The linebacker Mac Wilson becomes the force player in the alley. His job is to get to the outside of the play to contain the edge and force the run back into the teeth of the defense. Wilson tries to strike Kittle's inside shoulder to drive him backwards, but it's
it's like hitting cement. Kittle's aiming point is the outside number of Wilson, who then tries to cross Kittle's face. But Kittle rolls his hips towards the point of the block and keeps Wilson sealed inside to create the wall to lead the running back. He gets rid of Wilson and moves on to the safety. In both plays, he has effectively blocked three different defenders. Kittle makes these combo blocks look effortless, but it's a very challenging assignment for a tight end. Mere mortal Ross Dwelly is now the inline tight end and will try to combo block defensive end Chad Thomas and then work his way to the second level. Dwelly's initial punch misses Thomas's outside shoulder and instead of striking from his lower core, he brushes with his shoulder and moves on to the linebacker. He completely misses that initial punch. His body is expecting to absorb contact to keep him balanced, but without that first contact, he's left lunging forward as he reaches the linebacker. He doesn't have leverage, he doesn't have power, his entire chest is exposed for the linebacker to grab his pads and yank him out of the way. Dwelly only has one foot on the ground when he finds contact, so his block is completely ineffective. The edge is compromised, no wall is created, and the run is limited to a measly two yards. Whether Kittle is drive blocking, reach blocking, or sealing a defender inside, he has dominated Pro Bowl linebackers, safeties, and even massive defensive ends. Earlier in the year when the 49ers offensive tackles Joe Staley and Mike McGlinchey went down with injury, Shanahan called on Kittle to essentially play offensive tackle, occasionally taking on superstar pass rushers one-on-one -on -one in pass protection. This allows the offensive line to slide towards the interior and create an additional double team. Now Kittle is on an island one-on-one -on -one with five-time pro bowler Cam Jordan. Jordan is three inches taller, has arms that are almost two inches longer, and is 35 pounds heavier. To a effectively block a pass rusher who is that much bigger, you need to have perfect technique. Think of it like pushing a car. You're going to bend really low and your power is going to come from your butt and glutes. Kittle's footwork perfectly mirrors each of Jordan's steps while keeping his inside leg directed towards the center of Jordan's body. Jordan uses a counter club chop move. He steps inside to move Kittle away from the point of attack, then works outside. He uses the club to powerfully strike the inside pad of Kittle to move him off the spot. When he lands the club, Kittle shoots his arm out to gain control. Jordan uses his other hand to chop down to break Kittle's hold. As he's doing this, Kittle shoots his hand into Jordan's pads, taking away any power the chop move might have had. When Jordan realizes his move has been wiped away, he tries to bend down and bull rush with his gigantic frame. Kittle anchors down with his legs and absorbs all of Jordan's power. With proper knee bend, the pass rusher's powerful push is vaporized. Kittle takes the power from his legs and tries to lift Jordan up into the air like a forklift. Watch the footwork how he mirrors Jordan's every move. This is teaching tape for any tight end who's pass blocking and really any offensive lineman. Having a versatile tight end who can neutralize the defense's best pass rusher is incredibly advantageous for the offense. You can see this week in and week out. How did the 49ers pass protection hold up so well with injuries to their tackles, guards, and center? George Kittle. Vic Beasley is a completely different animal than Cam Jordan. Beasley utilizes quickness and agility to get to the quarterback. He heavily relies on his speed rush and speed to power moves. Beasley wants to fake inside, then use that speed move to scare Kittle into overextending his base to the outside. When a pass blocker needs to make up ground to cut off the outside edge, he'll overextend and can be caught off balance. If the pass blocker is off balance or overextended in his base, Beasley can easily convert his speed to power and run straight through him. But instead, Kittle takes small, tactical steps. If Kittle's anchor foot is still in the air, Beasley can throw him off balance and into the quarterback. Instead, Kittle takes a tiny slide step while sinking his hips towards the outside of Beasley. He gets underneath Beasley's armpits and lifts him into the air, canceling the power from his punch. Kittle keeps his butt low, has proper knee bend, hand placement, and lower pad leverage, which consistently wins battles and keeps the pocket clean for the quarterback. His abilities as a blocker in the run game help form the 49ers' deadly play-action attack. In outside zone, Kittle's assignment can change to a front-side reach block to kick out the alley defender in the second level. Safety Jesse Bates aligns across from Kittle. Bates hopes to cover him in man coverage on a pass and is the force player on a run, meaning he needs to get outside to try and force the ball carrier back in. Though Bates is much smaller, Kittle's helmet and pad leverage gets underneath his. Bates kind of looks like he's doing a pirouette as he he's lifted off the ground. He loses his balance and Kittle throws him into the dirt. Without Bates setting the edge, the linebacker, who technically is Joe Staley's assignment, has to take a rounded angle to become the
the force player. But since Bates is supposed to play force, the linebacker takes a poor angle. My favorite part of this play is after Bates totally eats it, he still tries to tackle the running back by kind of boinking his shin while laying on the ground out of bounds. Kittle's ability to block this well puts tremendous stress on the defense. After the coach cusses out Bates on the sideline, he has to cheat over to make sure he contains the run and forces the running back inside. The offense takes the same play side bucket step they would with outside zone. Bates has to make sure he's outside of Kittle, so he takes a gigantic step to his right to make sure he has the proper leverage. This shifts him out of position and creates a ton of open space for Kittle to show off his insane yards after the catch ability. He breaks a few tackles and gains 36 yards. I could have made an entire episode just on his ability as a pass catcher. He has elite speed with the ball in his hands and has natural instinct to seek contact and gain yards after the catch. Kittle is lined up as an inline tight end. The line fakes the outside zone action to the right and after two run fakes, Garoppolo flips his head around and finds Kittle in the middle of the field. The Ravens are in cover three zone. They match the 49ers tight formation with a condensed look of their own. The 49ers know teams are keying on their play action crossing concepts which are designed to suck up the linebackers then throw a crossing route behind them. Debo Samuel runs a deep over while Kittle sits down over the ball 10 yards downfield. The linebackers do get sucked up by the fake. Josh Bynes turns to find the crossing route and starts towards where the crosser would be and Kittle makes a fantastic catch. You can see it a little better from the end zone angle. Both linebackers attack the line of scrimmage when they see the run fakes. Bynes turns to cover the crossing route behind him, but that's not where Kittle's going. Garoppolo sees Bynes turn and run, so he throws behind Kittle to the open lane. The ball is thrown away from him, and in the pouring rain, he lays out to make an impressive diving catch. George Kittle has become the NFL's next superstar tight end. To become that ultimate weapon requires versatility. Nobody can out leverage him in the running game, premier pass rushers can't blow past him when he's pass blocking, and no linebacker, safety, or corner can guard him in coverage. There's an old adage that tight ends take a long time to develop, but Kittle broke the single season receiving yards record at the position in his second year. He's only 26 years old and just in his third season. And right now, he's just getting started. I want to give a huge thank you to Audible for sponsoring this week's episode. Audible is an unbeatable selection of audiobooks and Audible Originals, which are stories created exclusively for audio, including documentaries, exclusive audiobooks, and scripted shows that you can't hear anywhere else. Audible keeps you informed, inspired, and entertained. Also, with the convenient Audible app, you can listen anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Mobile, Alexa-enabled, Bluetooth, and more. Conveniently listen at the gym, while shopping, in the car, while traveling, anytime you can't read, you can listen with Audible. Audible members get more than ever before. Every month, you can choose one audiobook regardless of price, as well as two Audible originals from a fresh selection. Members stay motivated and inspired with unlimited access to exclusive guided fitness and meditation programs. Audible members can easily exchange any title they don't love at any time, and members keep their library of listens forever, even if they cancel. Currently, I'm listening to Bill Walsh's The Score Takes Care of Itself, My Philosophy of Leadership, which talks talks about the steps he took to construct the 49ers dynasty where he won three Super Bowl rings. While listening to this book, it really felt like I walked into the mind of Bill Walsh. I learned about his talent evaluation and team building strategies, which really helps me when I'm watching football. The holidays are coming up, and I've been buying Audible subscriptions for all my friends and family. Visit audible.com slash Rollins or text Rollins to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com forward slash R-O-L-L-I-N-S or text Rollins to 500-500. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video and appreciate you guys for making it to the end. All right, until next week, see ya.